Fantasy reached out to sponsor another video and sent me five more of their building sets. So today we're gonna to take a look at the $70 vintage television, the $140 90s retro PC, the $90 aircraft engine workshop, the $110 steampunk clock tower park, and lastly, the $110 steampunk railway station. So we have quite a variety of sets here. By the way, it is Fantasy's third anniversary and they sent me this really cool gift. They also accidentally sent me an extra retro PC and I wanted one of you guys to have it. So all you have to do is follow them on Instagram, share one of their posts and send them a DM and we'll pick a winner in about a week and I will personally ship this one here off to you. They also provided me with the code MNRNEW that'll get you 15% off your order of any Fantasy sets on Amazon. Use the links in the description below and let's get into that vintage TV. This is the 61008 Fantasy Vintage Television. It it is $70 with 1,173 pieces, and I'm not old enough to know if this box art replicates what old TVs would have looked like, but it's still cool to me nonetheless because it says Welcome to Fantasy, and as a new brand, it just kind of makes sense to me. The back of the box was a huge surprise to me though, as it shows off the main mode, and then it shows off the ability to use your phone inside of this thing to make a unique display. And because of that feature, I can't wait any low, whoa any longer to start that. So it looks like we've got a clear screen, but it is protected by plastic, so you shouldn't have to worry about any scratching or warping of this thing. Seems pretty neat. The instruction manuals are also protected by plastic, and then all of the parts come in these nice branded Panacea bags, which have the pink and blue color scheme. I found the other screen, it fell on the floor. It's cardboard, so it's not made of that same plasticky material that that one is, but it's like the same size and everything, so this should be pretty neat. You're kidding me, right? They included, what is that? I honestly, this isn't even on the box. There's just a large piece of cloth in here. So we'll see what that does later, I guess. Gotta get my little mat down. That's literally included with the set. So at first glance, this TV model looks pretty cool, but it's also pretty funky and three-dimensional. So if we zoom on in here, we can see the water flowing out from the scene going on inside of the TV. And this also doubles as a phone holder, which is kind of sick. Like, it's a weird use case, but you could totally use it to scroll through whatever you wanna scroll through. I really like just having that there. It just, it doesn't like look worse design-wise to have that, and it's a nice functionality. Now, of course, this flows inside of the TV where we have tons of sea life, including a shark. We have a diver minifigure here that is pretty cool. He's actually like flowing also out of the TV, which is kind of neat, gives it a better three dimensional look. And then at the very back, we have a little card that gives you an entire background to all of this. So it can look pretty good. Now there's another alternate way to display the TV and that would be to remove all of this. You got your fisherman on top, we can remove him. He was pretty cool up there, not gonna lie, but he's gotta go. And then when you turn this knob, the diver is gonna rotate back into the TV. So you can see the diver rotating in and the entire scenery is gonna drop behind on the TV. So it's all gonna go down and out of the way. And so this is so that you can do two more things with the TV. First off, if we go to the antenna here, we can lift this away and we have this back panel that you pull away. And on this back panel, you have the one card that was the sea life and then you have the other card. So if we go ahead and reinsert this, we can just turn the knob and you can see the really cool technic function at work, but we can place this right back in, close this on up, seal it in. And then what you're gonna wanna do, since we don't have anything protruding out of the front of the TV, they actually include this very large plastic window magnifying piece and if we just slide this in, it will actually make it look like a full TV there. And so it really fills out the picture. Now, there's not a lot of great viewing angles, of course, but it does fill it out really nicely from a straight on angle. Alternatively, if we take the cardboard out, you may notice it seems like the cardboard might be a little bit close to phone size. And it's actually intended that you can, again, turn the knob, place your phone in and let it tighten up on your phone. So it's actually gonna be compatible with lots of phone sizes, which is great. I was a little worried about that when I was building it, but you can see you can actually watch videos on your vintage fantasy television. It's a pretty wild experience. I feel like I should go use this in public. I don't know if I actually will though, but it would be kind of funny. Now back to the exterior, there's also some carrying handles. They're a little shallow, but you can place your fingers inside to lift the model easily without having to worry about it. You can also just grab it from the bottom, but it's that kind of authentic detail that I think makes the set. Uh, speaking of authentic details, they have some of the knobs on the front and some of the indicator lights, plus the Panacy logo, that's really neat. And then finally on the very back of this thing, we have the AV 
input lines there, which is pretty cool. No cables or anything going out of it, nothing you're actually gonna plug into your wall or anything fun like that, but they have all of the details that you would wanna see with the vintage TV, which is pretty crazy. And I just, I think it's so much fun that you can actually put your phone in there to watch content and it makes your phone screen bigger because it's a magnifying effect. So I love this thing. Here we have the set I'm most excited for, the 85005 Retro 90s PC. They say it has over 1600 pieces and this one is the most expensive one we're taking a look at today at $140 but I also do think it's the coolest, it's the cleanest, it has some very nice box art that feels very 90s to me. And the back of the box is amazing using these old windows frames to show off each of the little features and details that the set has on the inside, so it's pretty cool. First thing out of my box is the instruction manual, this one not in plastic. Let's see what we got in here. Pretty standard stuff as far as I can tell and the instructions should be a pretty easy process with our numbered pink bags. There we go. Oh, I was just finishing up my vintage 90s PC. Looks like it's booting up all right. It uh, does not have a lot of storage or RAM. I think this is my favorite set of the five that they sent me for this video. I think it's just such a cool look, such a cool throwback to the 90s, and it's got so many fun details, both outside and inside. We'll start with the keyboard. The keyboard is completely printed with some extra little fantasy tiles intertwined, and it has an entire QWERTY keyboard tile. Literally, that's the tile, QWERTY. I think that's really, really fun. Love that, so the keyboard looks really nice. The mouse is fine, it reminds me of an Apple Magic mouse. Obviously it's a 90s mouse, but it definitely has that vibe to me. And they include a mouse pad, which the bottom of is actually rubbery, and it's literally like a real mouse pad feel on the bottom. The top of it is a little bit uh, hard plastic, maybe like they would have been in the 90s. I certainly wouldn't use a mouse pad like this nowadays, but it is a really cool looking one and it's printed, so that's nice. So on the front of the computer, we've got a power button, a restart button, both of these are printed very nice. They don't have any functionality to them. Over here, we have the optical drive, and if you push in on this, it actually pops it out, and there's a little CD inside. And they've gone so far to add the detail, you can barely see it, we're gonna have to B-roll it, but it does say disc on the little clear piece. It's printed on, it says disc, so that's really, really, really cool. Reloaded just like that. Then just below, there's a floppy disk. We push this little red button, it ejects, and we can pull it right on out. It even says Panacea on it. That one is a sticker. I do worry about that wearing when you push it in and take it out because the sticker is rubbing right up against plastic. So that could be a small problem with this set, but the amount of attention to detail in this area is fantastic. Now, the front of the PC screen here, uh, you have a couple of different displays you can go with. This first one is the DOS prompt. It shows you a lot of information about the PC you can pick out what you want to know here, but it's pretty cool that they have all of those details and the little Panacea logo for their own operating system. We also have the Panacea logo on the actual monitor itself. If we pull this top part off, we can actually flip this around to kind of a regular Windows look, just like that. You can see my computer, my briefcase, I don't remember that one. The internet, you literally had a button for the internet. Okay, I, I'm not that old, so that's kind of wild to me. Um, and then we have the start and lots of you know fun details, whatever, down there. So I love that you get a couple display options, but then there's actually a functionality display option behind it, so you can see how that would look if we put that on like that. So like it's a little bit of a smaller screen. It's not as filled out as it was when we had the board piece in there. So I do prefer the look with this. That's why I started with it. But it has Minesweeper, which I'm sure a lot of people will be able to appreciate. And if you push this thing, actually I think you have to pull it out. I broke it. Regardless, the function here is that you can flip the board. I think it's fine. I don't really care as much for it because I would rather just have the full board inside of the, the computer like we have had before. But yeah, really cool attention to detail on this one. We'll slot this right back in. Looking at the back of the PC, we've got a couple of very nice printed parts here where you have the mouse and keyboard input, and then we have the VGA cable that runs from the computer to the monitor and back. Over here on your left, we have the fan that's gonna lead right into the power supply. How do we get to the power supply? Well, we gotta take the monitor off the top. Very simple, there's just four studs that connect it on top, and one of these sides, can't remember which, yep, that one, is gonna pop all the way off. So you get this entire top panel off of the build, just simple, easy to do. And once you're inside, 
there's there's a lot of detail in here to be frank it's kind of absurd how much trouble they went through to give you everything inside of the computer for the 90s PC here. First things first in here, we have the video card, which is entirely removable. It has some very nice printed details with the Panacea logo all over it. Then below, we have the motherboard, motherboard expansion slot. And on the motherboard, we've got the CPU heat sink, which is removable. We lift that little piece up and then this whole silver bit, I'm gonna break everything trying to do it, but fix that very easily. Whole silver bit comes off and then it says the Panacea core processor right there again all printed just beautiful attention to detail and quality within this set up here of course we have the optical drive and it's a completely removable modular thing so i assume if you ever wanted to upgrade your pc you could do that you could also get rid of the floppy disk and put something else in and it's like intended to do that because they have the studs there i guess not really intended but you get the point point. and lastly here we have the power supply which you can pull right out there's a fan on the back but we're not gonna open that because that could kill you so we're gonna place that back in very carefully. There we go. So I just love this set. I love the attention to detail, even on the interior where I will probably never open it up to see it. Like it's just really cool to know that all of that stuff is there and that all of that love went into building this cool of a model. So I would totally recommend picking this one up if you're looking for something like this for a retro display. Just think it's cool. The A5006 Aircraft Engine Workshop is kind of the odd set out in this video. It kind of looks like a Technic set to me. It is $90 and they say it has over 1,800 pieces, which assuming that piece count is correct is a really good price per piece. Although if you know anything about me, price per piece is not what I think really determines the value of a building set. The back of the box highlights some of the features and details that we'll take a closer look at here after we open the set. Whoa. I'm beginning to think that 1800 piece count is correct looking at all the pieces now. I just felt like the box was really light when I held it up, but there's definitely a lot of parts here. Anyway, the instructions again look like a normal experience and should lead you through the build no problem. The finished build for this aircraft engine set really did surprise me. It's a really large and imposing build and they included a lot of little extra accessory bits that we'll start with. First off, you have a little tool cart. It's got some minifigure tools. There's no minifigures included here, although there is a large robot, so theoretically he could make use of the tools, which is kind of cool. We also have a little desk, and again, a lot of this stuff is on wheels, so it can easily be moved around the workspace, but the desk has a little computer and printed keyboards, like, that's really neat. Then we have a little robot arm that can help you work on the computer. Just a very nicely detailed thing. Always love that little drum lacquered silver color that they're working with there. So I think that looks pretty neat. And lastly, we have this little scissor lift, which is really dope because it has a really cool Technic function where it can pop right up and lock into place just like that. So it won't go down even if you push on it, you have to release it with the lever. So love that. But of course the main attraction is the aircraft engine. And this thing is insane. So first things first, we have a beautiful looking aircraft engine with a spinning fan at the front. And honestly, I've just come to expect that sort of stuff with Panacea because they do seem to always include those little details. They've also got a little print on the side that says no humans. They've got the name of the engine, I think on the side, as well as a Panacea logo tile. You know how it is with Panacea. They've just got everything printed a lot of the times. Then we have this little orange rocker here. And this actually, creates the function that drops the lift arm. So you can actually drop the entire engine onto this little cart to be taken away. So we just keep dropping this thing down into the cart and then eventually it should be lowered more than enough. There is this dark tan Technic piece on the side here that we are gonna remove and that is going to free the aircraft engine from the lift arm here. So with our aircraft engine on the cart, we're gonna remove everything else out of the way. And if we come in a little closer here, what you'll notice is when the aircraft engine got dropped onto the cart, you see the little blue things on the side, little arms, they tighten up onto the engine. However, they might not be tight enough. So this little orange lever on the back can be used to tighten them even more. So throughout normal use, you shouldn't have to worry about it falling off of the cart or anything. If you're just rolling it around, it should be just fine as long as you've tightened it up. And then the last detail I wanna highlight on this thing is the interior of the engine. So we're gonna pull away at this and pull away at that. And you can see an immense amount of detail in there. I don't know what any of it is, but I know they went the extra mile. You can just look at it and tell there's an immense amount of detail and labor put into getting all of it there. I'm sure if anyone's worked on aircraft engines, they can comment below how accurate or inaccurate this is. But to me, it looks really good and really cool. So if you wanna display the engine in its like state of being repaired, you can actually attach it to the lift 
with the little side bits open. So if you wanna have like the robot look like he's working on the aircraft engine or something, you can definitely do that. And I feel like the scale is pretty good. Like he's just a little bit bigger than the engine intake. I mean, it might depend on what engine this is supposed to be modeled off of, whether that's proper or not. But overall, this thing's pretty dope, although it's pretty niche to me. Um, I feel like you really gotta love aircraft engines to want this one, but like, it's a well done set. Moving into the Panacea Steampunk subline, I've known of Steampunk for quite a while because I see custom builds of it at conventions, but seeing an official kit of it is pretty neat here. We have the 85008 Steampunk Clock Tower Park. It has over 1,800 pieces for $110 and is obviously supposed to be a nice version of London. The back of the box highlights a few of the neat details and functions we'll find on this build. Oh yeah, that's a lot. Oh. It comes with a base plate. That's pretty neat. 32 by 32 gray base plate and the instruction manual. Very steampunk themed. In front of it also steampunk themed, of course. And it looks like it'll be, again, just normal building instructions. What are you expecting? Oh, that's cool. The adult's welcome is different on this one. The finished steampunk tower build here is pretty amazing. It's a very tall build, definitely the tallest that we've taken a look at today. And it's got a ton of gold, as you can see, lots of color on it. We'll get back to that. I wanna start actually on the surrounding area and the base plate. The base plate's pretty nice, although because of the way it's tiled off, uh, some of the edges of it are kind of bent up a little. So it definitely would love to see that sorted out in like a future version of this build or whatever. But you can, because this is a 32 by 32 base plate, integrate this right into your modular city if you already have something like that going on or you could connect it to the avengers tower from lego marvel there's a lot of things you can do with this it can be weird but you can do it it does have a few small builds on the exterior starting out with the telephone booth and that classic red color you can open up the door here and access the phone with a figure Close that up, you have a little taxi, which has wheels. It's a review, that is something that is important to know. It does have wheels. If you open up the roof of the taxi, you could also open the door, but it's a little easier to open the roof to gain access to where the characters would fit inside. It is a two-seater front and back. Close that right back up. The taxi design is definitely very blocky, but I think it fits the vibe that they're going for. And finally, you have a pretty nice fountain that adds a splash of blue color. So there's quite a bit of color around the base. Starting at the base, there's some little steps where you could lead a character inside a small interior area. There's some nice gold along here. And then you have the large pendulum, which is gonna swing back and forth with the gear system. So the way the gear system works is there's a large knob on the back, it's pretty obvious where it's supposed to go. You just spin the knob and eventually you will hear it click. Like it'll be very noticeable, but it does take quite a bit of uh, winding. Now inside of here, right where I'm winding into, there's like a little gearbox that this is transferring all of its energy into so that it can be saved up and then let back out once you let go of the little piece on the back. So we're getting there or it's about to clip. You should hear it in a second. You hear that? Very, very big difference in the sound. So that means you've gone all the way that you can go. And it's actually quite a bit of spinning, but when you let this go on the back, it will go ahead and swing itself back and forth. There is an absurd amount of gears inside. There's a lot of friction going on. So it does move rather slow at times. So as long as you build it correctly, and this is a rather complex build with all the gears inside. So it is a bit of a concern that you could mess it up. But if you build it correctly, the pendulum will swing back and forth, albeit a little bit slowly. Now looking in through these beautifully printed window panes, you'll actually see that there are some colorful doors inside. I'm not really sure why they're so colorful in there other than to make it very visible as you're looking at the model, but you can see them spinning inside when the pendulum swings. So I don't really, again, understand what the whole point of it is, but there are quite a few colorful doors in there and they kind of act as fans. So you can kind of feel the air coming out as it spins or if you spin it faster. Last little note, as we move to the top, you have the little clock piece. It's printed with the time of day all around. And then the hands on this also do rotate as the pendulum is swinging. So seeing everything kind of move in unison is very nice as a function altogether, but it's just a lot of moving parts. So I think there's a lot of friction within the system. So I think a motor would go a long way on this set, like an actual like electric battery powered motor, I think would help this one out a lot, but still a very cool look and definitely could spice up your modular city. Last thing, last thing, the gold. 
I just can't get enough of the gold. It's all over this model. It looks so beautiful. And uh, there, there's going to be more gold on the next set. Let's take a look. I've saved the biggest set for last here with the 85007 Steampunk Railway Station. Same box art style. It's got the Steampunk train popping out of the top right. And you can see that railway station just huge there. This one has 2,723 pieces and it costs just $110 insanely cheap for the piece count. The back of the box shows the back of the train station and that the train isn't on like an actual track. It's actually suspended from above, which is a really unique way to do it. It highlights more of the details and functions that we'll be taking a look at. And given this set has by far the most pieces, I expect it to make a huge mess. Oh yeah. It, it did exactly what I thought. Okay. Oh, two instruction manuals. The rest of the pieces can stay there for now. We just need these. So just like the other steampunk set, it has the adults welcome in a different font, but otherwise the building instructions are completely normal, just like every other set. The finished build for the steampunk train station is insane. It's feature packed and has so many small details. Plus the train on the back is really cool, but we're gonna get to that at the very end of this thing because there's a lot on the front side that we need to look at. First off, the facade on this thing looks incredible. It's got so many things going on, little gears, little lights, little knobs. And then if you spin a little doorway at the very front, which does have some nice printed glass panels or plastic glass, but you know, supposed to be glass. Uh, when you spin that, it actually spins this, and then it also spins the hands on the clock above. So it's a really cool function that it all works together. It's all intertwined and that's really neat. And then you kind of top it off with this really beautiful roof piece with a lot of gold. There's a lot of gold on the front end of this set. Now, what it can do, if we drag, oh, you can get a preview right there. The sides can pull right off. So you pull it off, pull it back, and then we can pull this other side to the right and pull it back. So each of these three sections is entirely modular, meaning you can pull them off from the main section of the train station and have them on their own, which we'll do in a second. But you need to know that you shouldn't do that before you remove the train from the back end of the train station, because if you don't remove the train first, the entire backside of the train station will flip over the edge. And then you can take a side off. We can actually remove each of our three sections here very easily. They're just attached with some uh, little black Technic pieces, just really simple there. And just like that, you basically have, I would call it five distinct areas of the set here. We'll start with the front three. So starting with the little clock area, we have the doorway that I showed off and you can see that spinning. And then they use a little clear piece here. So you're actually able to see a lot of the gears doing the work in there, which is a really neat way to show it off. I feel like that's really within the theming of steampunk. And then yeah, just a little bit more gold, whatever. You can put some figures on there if you want. It doesn't do a whole lot else, but it does look crazy, crazy cool. Now, the next section is this little ticket booth here and it's small, but you can actually open it up. So first off it's closed and then you can open up these little side panels and now the ticket booth is open and ready for business. There's also, we pulled this off, a little train bulletin. And what's interesting about this is it's a print that is on three separate tiles. So the way it came in the box is that the tiles were already attached to the plate on the backside and they printed it all at once so that it all lines up perfectly. Cause you can see that white line is not, you know, moved over to the left or to the right, depending on which plate it's printed on. It's all perfect straight print because they printed it all at once. So that is incredibly smart and a nice detail, even though it's pretty hidden there. Like you can barely kind of see it when the ticket booth is there. So I thought that was really nice. So we'll go ahead and close that ticket booth back up. You can see the facade here a little bit closer, just some crazy stuff going on, but that's a nice small detail on the front side. First on this next section, we have what Panacea is calling a water bar and it's wild looking. I love that there's like a gold antenna piece. I've yet to ever see like Lego do that. So I love to see Panacea having done it here. It looks really cool in gold. I didn't know I needed that in gold. And it's just really neat to see so many small details in gold. Again, just a closer view of some of the facade working there, but um, yeah, very very cool little section and you can see how it looks when it's closed up on the back side of that front section. Lastly here we have this little green luggage cart and it's got a little piece of mail on there as well as some actual luggage and they give you plenty of space to put this on the train station. So there's a nice large open area for that. There's some beautiful benches inside of the train station with some really nice part usage of the little paint roller to use as armrests. I thought that was really cool. They've got numbered platforms hanging off from the walls and then there's a really nice clock at the top. Now, of course, there's a roof. The roof is done in a clear piece, which is like a, I guess, frosted clear. Looks very cool to me. 
It's not maybe the strongest roof because it does only have a singular uh, connection here on one side, but I think it gets the job done as long as you're not knocking into it, which wouldn't be something you would normally do anyway. So I think this is pretty good looking and it's sturdy enough. Now, finally, we have the train track but no train, let's get the train. So starting with the passenger car, this thing looks magnificent. The green and gold and gray color scheme is just on point, it looks beautiful. I think looking at it like dead on is really neat. You can see a beautiful shape to the entire build show you the other side here really quick. And much like we saw those paint rollers in the train station, we see some revolvers here as some really nice part usage on the actual train. So I just liked that. Now, while there are multiple seats inside of the train, it's really not accessible because the roof doesn't come off. It's not easy to access. You really can't put characters in there. Like I don't need to, but just so that you know. Now there's a little ladder to allow characters to walk up and in, or at least, you know, have that idea that that is what's happening. So I do also really like that. And it's a goal, it's another one of those pieces that I didn't know I needed in gold, a nice gold ladder, that's super dope. And then of course on the top, we have the full suspension setup, which I'll show you after showing you the rest of the train. Moving on to the actual train engine. This thing is absurdly cool looking. It's the same color scheme, of course, with the dark green, the gray, and the gold. It's got the fantasy set number on the side of the train. It's got this nice little top hatch looking thing to me. Same suspension setup as the other train, of course. And then you can see 007 on the side, I think is a pretty cool, I don't know if it's supposed to be a nod to James Bond, but that's what it feels like to me. And then we have this little propeller on the back. So this thing can spin. And as this spins, you can see that V10 style engine, the pistons in it moving in and out, which is really sick. And then at the very front here, they leave a little clear panel so you can see everything spinning at the front as well. So it's really cool to see them have all of these extra little details throughout a build like this. And it's a pretty sturdy build. Like this thing, it doesn't have an interior or anything. Like it's completely like solid basically. So I do appreciate that a lot too. Now, of course, if your train is suspended from above, it might not need a gold cow plow, but in the style of steampunk, it's certainly appropriate here. And lastly, the train car can pretty simply connect up here with a ball joint, very easy to do. And then I'll get the counterweight onto the train station and show you how that works and how it looks. So it uses the roller coaster rail system on the very top here in black. It nicely color matches the rest of the train station. And all you have to do is lift this up and carefully place it on so that all of the little wheels line up with the rails, but it's simple enough to do. And while the train is heavy, it doesn't cause it to sag all that much, if at all noticeably. So I definitely liked that the rail was able to keep its structure. See, it just barely, if at all, sags. And the last thing I would say with this is, yes, it'd be great to have more rail with this, but it really doesn't make a lot of sense. You can't have this turn very easily. It needs a very wide turning radius just because of how far away these are, I think, and these individually don't turn at all. So if you wanted to add on to this, I think it'd be pretty cool, but I also think it's a little bit impractical at least to expect the set to add on to it because it's just not gonna work. But yeah, you can see it'll fall right off the track, obviously, if you move it along. So you do have a very limited use of this, but I also don't view this as like a super playable uh, set. This is a very nice display though. You can see as you hang it over maybe the side of a, a table or the side of a shelf, having the train hang off might be the best thing about this. Like it just looks so cool to me suspended in the air. Like I love the way the train looks like that. So that's definitely a big pro to this set to me. So now that we've taken a look at all five of the building sets that Panacea sent me, I gotta say my favorite is still the retro PC. I still love that thing. But across the board, these are five creative, fun, and quality building sets. The brick quality is very, very high. They use Go Bricks, and it's pretty dang good at this point. I really like the way the bricks feel. Everything snapped together pretty dang well. It holds together pretty well normally. But I think they provide a little something for everyone here, with Steampunk being really outside of the box, and you know the aircraft engine being super niche, and then for everyone that's like really old, you know, PC and TV there, you know, all the age groups. Anyway, if you guys are interested in any of these, don't forget code MNRNEW is good through the end of February, 2024, and that'll get you 15% off of these fantasy sets over on Amazon. And don't forget to enter the giveaway. I'll have the instructions in the description below for that 90s PC, because I just think it's the coolest set. And I'm glad that I accidentally ended up with a second one to be able to give to one of you guys. And lastly, just let me know what you guys think about these uh, building sets. I think they're pretty cool, but you know, I just want to hear what you guys have to say about them. That's it. See ya.